Yo, yo, yo. What's happening? <laughs> you alright, Owa? <laughs> How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? Happy Big Friday, everyone. Happy Big Friday. I'm real hyped today. I'm real hyped today. Beard, what's up, dude? How are we doing? Happy Big Friday to you. Early bird today, Beard. Thanks for coming along, buddy. How how are we? How are we? How did it go with your uh, PC after? Did you, uh, did you start building it? Doing well, just working. Okay, all right. Where's the? Oh, is it, it's behind me. Oh, I it thought it. Into my shirt. I betrayed myself. I was like, what? Is there something wrong with the shout out? But it was just the game you were playing. Doing well, just working. Thanks for uh, being here while you're working, buddy. Thanks for the work, look. Still waiting on the F mud motherboard. Oh no way, dude. Some parts, some parts can take their time, mind. They can, you know. That's uh um that's unfortunate when you're uh, ordering all the parts separate. Uh, you just be end up waiting on one or two bits, but uh, it'll arrive, dude. It'll arrive, and uh, you'll be up and running. And I'm super excited for you. <laughs> Was supposed to be yesterday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it'll get here. It'll get here. It will. It's on its way. It's on its way. Fingers crossed, dude. Fingers crossed. But uh, happy Big Friday. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Um, I uh, first and foremost, um, sad beard. Oh no way, dude. Uh, but first of all, uh, apologies, apologies for being late. I promised you I wouldn't be late today, but there is good reasons. Um, I had a, t a tiny, tiny little technical difficulty, which was uh, easily sorted by a restart of my computer. But um, also, um, I had a nap. <laughs> I had a nap because I was up all night last night for good reasons, though, for good reasons, not bad ones. Nothing to do with being ill or any of that nonsense. Um, I was up all night working, uh, well, call it work, but I was, uh, working on stuff, just revealed, uh, by accident there, my, uh, my get up before we start playing as well, but, uh, that's, uh, we'll go into, uh, why I, I look that way in just a moment, uh, Beard, how are you? I am buzzing, my friend, um, I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> I am absolutely ecstatic because I figured out a massive problem I've been having um, with um, with the YouTube side, uh, with the uploads and the quality of the uploads. Fingers crossed, okay, because um, I've tested it and it's brilliant. But um, this is going to be the first uh, the first vod that goes up on YouTube is going to be in higher quality. So I'm really happy about that. That's that's kind of what I was doing all night. Um, so I'm I'm really happy about that. Really happy about that. Second reason I'm really happy, it's Big Friday, and uh, I'm hype. I'm hype, and it's the first Big Friday since I fell ill where I haven't been ill. So I'm really hyped about that. And third of all, um, we're starting Honest Hearts tonight, and uh, it's it's the only DLC we've got left now to do on stream. Um, but um, I'm really super hyped about that as well. Uh, beard. I got paid and purchased the Overlord collection on Steam. Nice, dude. It's another another game I haven't played. Another game I haven't played. I'm gonna um I'm gonna do a uh, a little uh, series soon on stream. We're gonna try and play uh, PC games that I missed out on because um I only got a gaming PC for the first time last year. So growing up traditionally, um I was a console gamer. And I missed out on loads of PC classics, and I want to I want to try and play as many of them as I can this year on stream. I've got some uh, I've got some notes written down somewhere. Some games I got. I'm gonna play Half Life, obviously, uh, and a few others. A few other classics that I didn't know. Uh, what I consider to be PC classics uh, that I didn't get around to playing growing up. Um, oh, I've read that. Yeah, but uh, Overlord's another one I haven't played. I know that's um, on console as well, right? That's the one where you control minions, right? If I'm not mistaken, but um, I am gonna uh, I am gonna do that at some point, all the same. So, um, I've got some stuff to cover before we start. You join me here today, up here north of H and H Tools Factory. Um, seeing that is pretty bright, isn't it? Uh, it might just be the pimp boy though. Because it's a bit gaudy. If I turn around, there you go. The light's not reflecting off it so much. Um, <laughs> Beard, it's a raunchy older game where you play as an overlord in charge of little minions. Yeah, yeah, I know the one. I know the one. There's a couple of them, right? Oh, you did say you've got the collection. Here we are. 
But uh, you join me today just north of h and Tools Factory, here at the Northern Passage, uh, where we're going to, uh, well, like I said last time, uh, we've we've gone through quite a lot, okay, with this all this business between Father Elijah and um, Ulysses. Uh, of course, uh, we found out about those two in Big Mountain, where um, there was a bunch of brains and robots uh, doing horrific science experiments. Even did some on our on our person as well. Changed, swapped a bit, a few of our body parts, and lobotomized us and everything. From there, then we uh, pursued Father Elijah to a casino that never opened because the bombs fell and it's turned into an absolute nightmare. Uh, where Elijah slapped a bomb collar on us and we went through all sorts of uh, shenanigans there and then we went to uh, see after uh, locking Elijah in an underground vault we went to see Ulysses who was the other courier and uh, we had an end to things uh, that was resolved very very favorably though fortunately and now we're friends with Ulysses so after all that I figured we deserve a holiday right we deserve a holiday and uh, I'll just show you my gear real quick. I managed to get hold of another 357 because it's kind of tradition at this point to start a new DLC uh, carrying that as our primary means of uh, defense. You don't want to be walking around the Mojave Wastes without a gun on your hip. That would be silly, wouldn't it? You don't want to do that. So I got, got myself another uh, 357. Uh, I got 50 rounds in total for that. I got my flare gun, but no fuel. I uh, figured we'd bring that anyway because I was... No, it's just a flare gun. Uh, I got some stuff that I can't drop because they're considered quest items. Uh, the Big Mountain Transport Ponder. They're not weapons as such, though. I brought a shovel with me, though, because there's this little grave here. And we're going to do a quick bit of grave robbing before we start. I'll take the 9mm rounds. That's fine. And uh, what I'm wearing. Um, I found myself an old cowboy hat and some relax wear. Uh, from pre-war, you know, we're going on holiday and we need some sunglasses as well because uh, where we're going uh, It's gonna be very nice. Well, it's the Mojave. It, it's it's New Vegas. The weather's gonna be hot no matter what So uh, we're going to uh, an, a, a bit of a paradise today. We're going to Zion where the water's not irradiated in the slightest uh, there's game everywhere um, and animals and uh, plants and, and, and fruits and things uh, it's a bit of a natural uh, natural paradise, so what better place to go than uh, uh, to Zion uh, for, a, for a nice little holiday uh, and a getaway. Although I expect it's probably going to be trouble in paradise, if uh, I'm honest with you. So, uh, honest, honest hearts, uh, there's the title, there's the title. So, uh, we're going to be heading over there today. Um, I've got, I've made, I've done my homework again. I've made a few notes this time. It's not much uh, that I need to cover, or I would like to cover in this DLC, uh, I should say. Um, it is totally uh, non, uh, well, it is totally side content. It's not anything that, who said that? <laughs> Thanks, Beard. Um, <laughs> uh, you're so fancy. Go kill Matthew Perry. I think Matthew Perry's dead at this point, dude. Uh, Benny, Benny's dead at this point because, of course, uh, you're correct. Uh, Benny is actually voice acted by Matthew Perry in this game, and uh, it's questionable the job that he does. To be fair, some of the voice lines he delivered, I can't believe they let him out of the recording booth uh, and thought that was fine. But um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, I don't remember. Oh yeah, there's one thing in particular I'd like to cover. And it's totally optional as well. The game um, doesn't take you there. So I've made a note of a few locations that we need to cover. And I'll try my best to um, cover all of that if I can. But other than that, we're going to have a good old time. Um, now, Honest Hearts, um, it's... Uh, oh, just to confirm as well, before I forget. I've switched over to Hardcore this time, okay? Um, I wasn't going to play Lonesome Road or Dead Money on hardcore mode. There was just no way it was happening. That would have been ridiculous. But uh, Zion, Zion's fine. Zion is manageable in hardcore. So we've switched over to hardcore. My weight is probably the best my weight has ever been aside from right at the beginning of uh, a Bethesda game. I've got, I'm carrying 52 pounds right now out of 230. Which is going to be kind of funny in a moment. And uh, you'll see why. But um, yeah, let's... Um, 
let's uh let's get on i think i think i've covered everything uh oh there's one thing um honest hearts the way that honest hearts deals with things um traditionally we've been going th and starting these uh uh, these DLCs without any of my cool fun toys. Now, I'm uh, level 47 at the moment. I think I'm three levels away from Cap. So, this DLC is not going to be difficult at all, not in the slightest. Um, even when we get um, items on site, so to speak. Uh, any of our gear and weaponry and stuff. But, um, Honest Hearts kind of reserves your... The sun is killing me! This is a hollowed out rock. Oh, nice. I'll take more 9mm. I didn't expect that. Cool. Alright. Great. Uh, what was the same? Oh yeah. Honest Hearts kind of reserves all of its fun best toys until after the end. It doesn't really give you like anything too ridiculous. Um, so let's, let's just go in, shall we? ka -ching, What's up? Hey everyone. Hey, ka -ching. How you doing? Happy Big Friday, ka -ching. Thanks for coming along, buddy. It's good to see you again. Right, okay. Now, um, sh who should we talk to first? Should we talk to you first? Howdy, friend. Oh, everything should sound and look fine, by the way. If not, let me know in the chat and I'll sort it out uh, straight away. Wait a minute, I recognize you. Yeah, you're Alice McLafferty's rising star, ain't you? You sure you want to be here? McLafferty's non-competes are pretty rigid. That's interesting. Um, he um, actually has a voice line there. Um, I don't know if you remember, way, way, way back in the main game, we did actually do this before um, we had to switch over to console. Um, Alice McLafferty is in the Crimson Caravan, and she asked you to do a, a various um, a various few uh, jobs for her in the Crimson Caravan. Now, he's recognized that, and he's called me Alice McLafferty's Rising Star. The Crimson Caravan are fully aligned with the NCR. And what's surprising is that the NCR hate me at this point. So, um, that's interesting. That's interesting that he still mentioned that. Um, okay, tell me about the job. The job is simple. Help us get this caravan in design and find new Canaan. The pay is 25 caps per day. Half up front, half on return. I gotta admit, dude, that's not, that's not a design, huge amount. Plus another bonus if we reach new Canaan. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't mention the name Joshua Graham to anyone. Anyone. Interesting. Uh, who's uh, Joshua Graham, and why shouldn't I talk about him? Just don't. It makes the new Canaanites powerful uncomfortable, and it scares the britches off the tribals. Don't talk about the burn man either while you're at it. Trust me on this one. It's for your own good. Okay, so don't mention Joshua Graham and don't mention the burn man. Okay, noted. Uh, I understand this caravan is headed to Zion. What can you tell me about the area? Well, I ain't never been inside myself. Did some trading with the new Canaanites from their mission there. But that was all on the outskirts. All the old ways in and out were destroyed after the war. But we got ourselves the location of a pass the new Canaanites use. That's our way in. That's why I wanted someone with a pit boy on the caravan. The map will be helpful for checking the topography. Keeping us on the trail. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, how about a game of caravan? Uh, we won't be playing caravan. Um, I haven't been through Utah recently. What is the situation like? Well, it ain't good. I'll tell you that. It's not like the Mojave or the NCR. Hell, even Arizona under Caesar is safer. You got raiders all over the damn place. Tribes of degenerates that'll eat you as soon as look at you. Regional warlords, the works. Not too many decent places to stop and trade. New Canaan's one of the only ones left I know about. Okay. Um, Degenerate tribes? That's right. The folks that lived in Zion before the war, they didn't just get a little savage. They're downright feral. Oh dear. Most of them don't even speak English anymore. You got to get yourself a new Canaanite translator to talk to them. The ones you really got to watch out for are the white ladies ah. from the Great Salt Lake. They'll attack just about anyone that ain't one of theirs. Yeah, rem uh, remember the name White Legs. Um, I had other questions though. True. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't have any questions. That's all for now. Uh, I'll be back. 
Yeah. Now, um, Jed uh, mentioned something interesting there. How it's safe um, in uh, it's it's like mentioned a couple of times. Um, it's just another uh, just some another light sh shed and light on uh, some areas under Legion control. Um, he mentioned they're actually quite safe. They're actually quite safe to uh, trade uh, in uh, Legion controlled areas. They do keep um, they do keep law and order. Uh, if uh, nothing else, right? We're going to talk to this guy next, Ricky, because Ricky, in the in a really really terrible way, is a bit of a star. You looking for trouble, bud? I got plenty to spare. So watch your ass around me. Uh, okay, Ricky. Um, unwarranted hostility and general agitation. How long have you been a psycho addict? We can uh, do a little medicine check here. <laughs> um, I see you're wearing a pit boy in a vault suit there, uh, there, Ricky. Nice job, Eagle Eye. Of course I got a pit boy in a vault suit. So what? Where'd you get the vault suit, buddy? Where the fuck you think? Vault 2-2. Two -two. That's where I grew up. Uh, we know. And because we've been to Vault 22 in the past, Vault 22, just as a reminder, that's the one with all the spore monsters. Uh, where they were trying to create vegetation and it went a bit wrong and infected all of the vault dwellers and turned them into spore monsters. Um, so we could call him out because we've been there. Uh, you're lying. It, I've been to Vault 22. No one's lived there in 150 years. Oh, you've been to Vault 2 too, huh? I may have been exaggerating a little. Truth is, I got this suit and the pit boy off a dead prospector who came out from Zion. Guy was dead when I found him, okay? Had a ton of shit on him. That's how I know there's good loot in Zion, see? Uh, what do you use your pit boy for there, Ricky? Sorry. The shit I do with it is so far over your head, be wasting my time to put it in words you could understand. Basically, it makes me badass. More badass, I mean. It's totally mind-blowing shit. It ain't just a bracelet. Know what I mean? Jed says it's got maps and shit like that. So that's how I'm gonna guide this caravan where it needs to go. Not that I didn't know all that already. Uh, did you notice I'm wearing a pit boy too, uh, there, Ricky? Huh? Of course I noticed. First thing I noticed about you. Me? I'm so used to wearing mine, it's just normal. Don't think you're somewhat special just because you got one. Richard, what's up, buddy? How are we doing? I, I see you there. I see you. Uh, Rich, you came for the Mecca, stayed for the law. <laughs> hey, Mecca, hope you're having a great one. Uh, got a lot to do today, but wanted to drop in. Thanks for dropping in, buddy. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming in to say hi. And I uh, hope you're not too busy. hope you haven't got too much to do. Uh, let's give a shout out, my friend. Happy Big Friday to you as well. Did you see me focus a tape? I'm focusing the yelling at the wrong play. Oh, Go on, dude. You get him. You get him. Actually, I'm gonna kill this Leona. Check this out. <laughs> I've been meaning to try this game still. I know I said that a while back. I think I said it before I got ill, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Happy Big Friday, Rich. Thanks for popping along, buddy. Hope you're doing good. Right, we've got an, uh, another couple of uh, checks here now related to this Pip-Boy. Um, we can tell him... Um, I don't think your pit boy works. I better go tell Jed. Uh, we'll do the science check in this instance, though, even though it's uh, the lower check. Your pit boy isn't working. The screen's locked up, and the reboot button is missing. Bullshit! Ain't <coughs> nothing wrong with my pit boy. I, I mean, pit boy. Look, this is a sweet gig for me. Don't go fucking it up. What are you after, anyways? You know what? I think Jed already might know anyway because um, he mentioned. Uh, having us along because uh, he wanted people with pit boys so I think he might be on to Ricky but uh, anyway um, at this point now what we could do we could tell him to scram and that'll actually get rid of him as well he won't come along on the expedition but um, I would like Ricky to come along I don't see uh, why he shouldn't um, other than being a bit of a, an asshole um, but you can get uh, more carry weight because this DLC, although it doesn't restrict you what you can take in, 
Um, it uh, You can take uh, things in with you from the main game or, or anywhere else, really, any of the other DLCs. Um, it does restrict you because it does limit your carry weight to what you can you can take in. That's not a problem for us. I showed you our carry weight just momentarily. But um, I'm going to... Uh, I find this amusing that Ricky's going to take less uh, to carry some stuff for me, even though I don't have... Uh, any issues with carry weight whatsoever going in so uh, carry some of my gear and I'll keep my mouth shut I travel light on purpose okay but fine I'll tell jet I'm carrying less so you can carry more what an asshole um there is more that I want to talk to Ricky about uh you do anything around here besides talk too much you want to know what I do but anything I fucking want I'm one of a kind I've been places, see, and done things. Lots of them. And when it's time to kill shit up, hell yeah, I'm a fucking storm of death. Something or someone make the mistake of crossing Ricky, I'll fucking dead eye him, her, or it. Oh, you gotta love Ricky. Yeah, He's fact, funny. That's my nickname. Dead Eye Ricky. That's my name. Uh, Richard, one day we will get you in. Uh, also, I got split. Oh, uh, on League. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try it, dude. Um, I will. Uh, I'll download it soon. I'll definitely get it. It's on Game Pass, see. So, uh, I think you get all the uh, champions or heroes or whatever they call, as well. Uh, also, I got Splatoon, so we need to swap frame codes. Nice, dude. Yeah, definitely. I will. Um, I'll DM you later. I'll uh, try and remember. I'll DM you my frame code later, and uh, add me. That would be uh, that'd be great. I haven't played Splatoon in a little while, though. Uh, but uh, I could jump back in, no problem. It's like riding a bike, right? Um, let's see now. Dead Eye, huh? How did you get that nickname? Uh, how you think? I shoot things in the eye. That's how good I am. Yeah, I'm that good. Why? Uh, once I got jumped by three death jaws. Death jaws? Except actually, it was four of them. Imagine that. But I didn't panic because. Because I never panic. What I did was become a storm of death. Shot every one of them monsters. Pop in the eye. Something doesn't add up here. And with survival, uh, just 20 actually. Just a really low uh, survival check here. Death draws, huh? Did you mean to say death claws? No, no. You heard me right. Death jaws. They're like death claws. But bigger teeth. Or there was the time one of the right, sure. steel brotherhood assholes made the mistake of messing with me. Last mistake he ever made. You're saying that you killed the brotherhood of steel paladin. What's it sound like I'm saying? If I was saying what you said I was saying, then yeah, I said it. I was walking along, minding my own, and up pops one of them brotherhoods. He yells, hand over that laser rifle, asshole. So I hand it over. Just to make him think I'm scared. But really, I'm not. I never am. Before he knows what hit him, I draw my 11 millimeter machine gun and bam, bam, right through the eye slit in his helmet. DOA. Uh, I see a problem with that. Uh, oh, power armor training. I didn't know that that was uh, an option here. What a load of crap. The eye slits of a T series power armor are bulletproof. Uh, we're gonna go with guns, though. Too bad there's no such thing as an 11 millimeter submachine gun. There so is, or was it nine millimeter, or a ten? I don't know. Don't care. Said I was good at killing shit up. Never said I was good with numbers. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, do you have any other special skills or abilities, Ricky? Well, I grew up near Dayglow out west, so yeah, I grew a third nut that glows in the dark. All right, buddy. <laughs> this, uh, let's let's be on our way. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> sure thing. Right. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's get uh, going then by talking to Jed. I am very ready. This again? Yeah. You sure you want to be here? McLafferty's non competes are pretty rigid. All right. Let's go. I'm ready. Are you? You know, we ain't coming back this way for a good long while now, right? And you know about the weight limit. I don't want no whining about old Mr. Masterson. 
I left my one of a kind plasma cannon <laughs> base. Can we go back for it? You sure you're ready now? I <laughs> do. I think he might have said that because I'm not carrying a lot. I've got like basically nothing on me right now. But uh, yeah, and I'm sure. Let's go. Well, all right, dear. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. And we got a first part of our payment from in there as well. Which is a low amount considering. Considering the distance we're traveling. Uh, never mind. What do I know about the, the Mojave economics? Slow going. So you might as well keep your ears open and listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpais Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame them. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpais Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribal started to talk, said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legate is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. There we are. More about um, Joshua Graham then. Been a long couple of weeks, but here we are. Zion. We've heard plenty about uh, Joshua Graham at this point, but just a quick recap. He was the Legate before Lanius. And uh, he failed to take the dam the first time that the Legion attacked it. And that's why uh, Caesar threw him into uh, the canyon and lit him on fire. And then what? God damn it, Stella heard you the first time. And the 15th, too. The new Canaanites will know a way. And if they don't, we've got the maps on our friend's pit boy over there. Enough lollygagging. Get moving. And keep an eye out for tribals. Keep an eye out for tribals, you say, huh? Good thing I brought my uh, 357 with me, huh? Hey, Ricky. And here we are in Zion. Very pretty indeed. Very, very pretty. Some would might say Paradise. Or Paradiso. Which might come up uh, a bit later on. Um, oh, trouble. Trouble. Right, let's try and uh, let's try and contribute. Oh, that guy died. Oh, all right, Ricky. I thought you were a badass mate. Oh, Ricky's dead. Ricky's very much dead. I'm on holiday. <laughs> Cut this out. Oh. All right, there goes another one. Is that... Is there anyone from the caravan left? I see you, mister. Uh, why? None of that hit at all, whatsoever. It's fine. 
I brought just enough ammo. It'll be fine. Right. Is that guy up there gone? I don't think that guy up to my left. I don't think he actually... There we go, finally. I don't think he actually died. The guy up there. Oh, is that him? This might be him. Right. Uh, I will take uh, whatever I can right now. Um, this is poison. This is poison. You don't um, really see this too much around other parts of the game. There's uh, ways of using poison in um, in dead money with the cloud residue. But uh, I'm going to take some of that. I'm also going to take me a fire axe as well. Because at this point, my melee is actually uh, maxed. So uh, we'll be pretty good with that. Tomahawks as well. Now, this uh, armor is going to be much better than my civilian clothing. But, um, if I just... Ah, you there. You have leather armor. I'll take your armor, I think, instead. Remember, we're on survival as well. So, everything's going to have weight, including uh, uh, including ammo. Uh, put that on. Um, just to cover it as well, because I, I forgot to uh, before we, uh, we entered the DLC. I did bring a bit of purified water with me. But um, when I turned hardcore on, um, my uh, my my dehydration shot right up for some reason, so I had to drink a couple. And uh, I brought a couple of meals ready to eat as well. I didn't bring too many because I thought that would make things just... Uh, I thought that would just be cheating a little, you know. So uh, I'm going to hotkey a few things right now. Um, I'm going to put my fire axe on. And uh, we're going gonna, to we're gonna go over to Tomahawks for the time being. Um, right, Ricky... Uh, right, if I take your vault suit, I wonder if I'll be able to hand that in uh, to Sarah later on, or whatever her name is in the um, uh, the, the, the casino on the strip, uh, Vault 21. Uh, laser rifle, nice. Um, that's not very good armor-wise. It's got, it's got some decent effects on it, uh, but... We've maxed both of those stats, so I'm going to leave it with her. Um, she's got a recharger pistol. Nice. And a couple of stim packs. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Have you got leather armor, sir? I'll use that leather armor to repair my own. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, let's see. Leather armor. Put that in better condition. And uh, I'll repair my sunglasses as well with Ricky's. Um, ka -ching. That escalated quickly. Yeah, it do, uh, ka -ching. It do. Uh, it very, very much do. Um, we get as soon immediately as soon as you arrive here, pretty much. Uh, it starts kicking off with uh, with these tribals here. A rebar club. Um, is that what's that like compared to my fire axe? I think the fire axe is going to be better. Uh, DPS at eighty five, damage fifty seven. Yeah, um, I don't want the rebar club. Riot shotgun though. These guys do carry quite good weaponry on the occasion. Uh, ooh, another fire axe. I can use that to repair my own. And some more tomahawks as well. Tomahawks are going to be really good. Um, I can repair a few bits and bobs with what I just picked up as well. Uh, let's smash them together. Um, smash together my fire axes. That is uh, still hotkey. That's fine. Already as well, we're, uh, we're getting quite well armed already even though i didn't br really bring a lot with me there is red on my compass down here so be careful these are the white legs as well these are the um tribals that jed mentioned to this when we pressed him uh for more information a brush gun you don't see one of them every day um i'm gonna take uh i'm gonna take a lot of things to sell uh as well oh that's got no negative oh that's uh purified water that's why what i wanted to look at was the healing powder uh, I must have picked it up by accident though. Healing powder. Perception minus three. I don't think I'll be taking that with me. That's terrible. Uh, it's not even that good for healing either. Uh, in all honesty. Now uh, if I just do... Who do these giblets belong to? A guard. Someone I've already looted. That's fine. Uh, if I just take my time. There's a couple of guys around here. But uh, I'm going to take the headshot with these uh, with these tomahawks. And they're actually really surprisingly good. <laughs> Alright, and uh, as for your buddy as well, let's take him out with uh, a swift uh, tomahawk to the head. <laughs> uh, they're really cool. I like this weapon. They're funny. 
Right, you had a riot shotgun as well. I'm going to repair the one that I picked up off uh, the other guy. Um, restores limb condition. Nice. Uh, and arm damage plus two. It also reduces your sleep as well. Agility minus four, though. I'm going to take it because I think it's uh, an ingredient for um, something else. And uh, we can use that in an emergency. How many doctor's bags have I brought with me? Uh, D. Oh, I've got a ton. I don't really need that, but we'll take it anyway. Uh, the riot shotgun. That's what I really wanted. That's an amazing gun. You've got one too? Fantastic. Okay. Okay, we're in, like, really pretty good good, uh, good situation now. Uh, look at all these riot shotguns. I got a full condition riot shotgun just from looting uh, these guys here. That's, uh, that's really cool. Uh, well, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Uh, I'm going to hotkey that down there because that's a really good gun. That's a really, really good gun. Okay. And uh, off we pop. There's a guy up there shooting at us, but uh, he won't last too long. He gets taken out pretty quickly. Hoy, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. Wow. Joshua will want to hear about this. Oh. Um, we were told, pretty much um, told not to mention the name Joshua Clark or the Burn Man. And uh, first, first tribal we bump into, and the first person he mentioned is Joshua. Joshua, Joshua Graham, Graham, sorry. He leads our tribe. Thanks to him, the dead horses are strong and safe from our enemies. He'll want to talk to anyone coming up from Southways. Guess that means just you now. Come, I can take you to him. All right, let's go. Good sists. We head east then. Joshua is at our tribe's camp in the Eastern Virgin. And uh, we've got our first companion, Follows Chalk. Uh, Follows Chalk has given you the well-stacked Cairns perk. Uh, while Follows Chalk is in your party, reaching any summit in Zion Valley, such as ranger stations, will reveal all no nearby map markers and inspire a heightened state of awareness, plus three perception for three minutes. Uh, it's alright, it's a nice little companion perk. Um, now, I need to mention something about companions in this DLC. Um, there's two in particular, one of which is actually our good friend um, who's with us right now, uh, Follows Chalk. If he dies, and there's another one where these rules, uh, there's another one we'll get shortly as well, uh, or later on, where these rules apply. But if he dies, it will automatically kick into the bad ending immediately. So, I need to keep my companions alive, basically. Because I, I, want, I want to get a certain ending by the uh, time we're, we're done with this DLC. And uh, that means if he dies, I won't get the ending that I want. So uh, we've got to be very, very careful. Because we're on hardcore as well. Um, companions are very, very much mortal. They can very, very much die. And up ahead. I think we're going the right way. I think we get introduced to... Ah, here we are. Um, Yao Guai, or a bear. If you're uh, familiar with the Fallout series, uh, these are a common uh, common creature in Fallout 3. Um, they uh, they actually reside a lot in Fallout 3. So uh, we just got introduced to our first bear, taking on a rather large green gecko. Actually, just to tell you, you know, these are the new uh, the new creatures of uh, this DLC, and they are much much. They could tear apart geckos essentially. If we run into him, though, I'm going to throw some tomahawks at his face. Where did he go? I actually wouldn't mind killing him. Nice view from the top of the cliff, you say? I will take a look. That is a nice view. You weren't kidding, buddy. Alright. Let's, uh, let's move on. Is that the, the bear around the corner there? Is he the red on my compass? 
right now. There he is. Right. Did he just die? Or did he fall asleep? I think he fell asleep. Or is he fighting with something? Oh, that was right. Oh, that was in an unfortunate space. <laughs> Poor bear. Right, let's, uh, what have you got on you? Yao Guai meat. I will take that. We're on hardcore after all. We are going to have to be uh, feeding ourselves and, and watering ourselves. Right, okay. A lot of the vegetation around here, though, is very, very edible and very, very good. Uh, I'm going to pick up some banana yuccas and we'll take a look at them. Banana yucca fruit. Food minus 20, H2O minus 30, and uh, HP plus 2 for 7 seconds. I do need, actually, some uh, healing, so I'm going to eat one of them. I'm going to stack it with a couple of other things as well. Uh, we'll eat a buffalo gourd seed. Um, let's see. Grilled mantis. I brought that with me. Let's eat uh, honey mesquite pod as well. That'll do for now. Let's get some healing uh, ticking up. Also, over by here, we've got some prickly pear fruits as well. So, uh, it's, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be difficult to keep on top of, uh, our food and, uh, thirst. Our hunger and thirst, I should say. Oh, trouble. I saw, uh, I saw a stray bullet fly past there. Just trouble to me. There's nothing on my compass right now. Oh, I see a gecko. Okay. Got a gecko up in her head. He can't fire bullets, though. Who fought? Who, who shot a gun? Hello, Mr. Gecko. Can I get him from here, do you reckon? Tomahawk. Let's go. If this uh, hits him now, this is going to be great. <laughs> oh, and I got the animal control perk for that as well. Good timing. What about this guy? The accuracy on this guy's not so good. I don't really have a long range weapon though at this point. Oh, I do. I got a hunting rifle. That'll do. We did get slightly unlucky with what uh, what we had dropped for us off of those enemies. You can, because they do carry anti-material rifles, or they can at least carry uh, anti-material rifles. But uh, we had uh, we had an abundance of riot shotguns instead. Oh, another Yaogwai. That hit. That hit. But it didn't kill. Come on, buddy. Come over here. That's right. And uh, follows Chalk gets the uh, gets the kill. Right, I will take his meat as well. I don't really need this uh, three five seven anymore, to be honest with you. It's not going to uh, cut the mustard really. With uh, some of the weaponry I've been picking up, um, I do want some gecko stuff. This is all quite valuable for weight to value ratio, but. Uh, gecko hides. Uh, I'm going to take this for the time being, but I don't think there's um, enough gecko types in this DLC for me to actually uh, use it for what I'm thinking of. But we'll we'll take it anyway, just in case. Just in case I'm wrong about that. Okay, and here we have a location. Our first uh, pre-war location. See those handprints? Dead horses and sorrows mark them on taboo places. Places from back when. Good thing for you, I don't buy into that stuff. You don't buy into that stuff? Okay. Uh, taboo from back when. I guess this is uh, fine for me to uh, go and loot then. Um, I will be taking this park ranger hat. And uh, what we got in this first aid? We got really unlucky there with that uh, that draw. Not much in the way of first aid there. But uh, I do have a nice new hat, which I'm going to put on immediately. Because if I look at my old cowboy hat, we just get plus one perception off of that. 
But we get plus one perception and plus five survival off of this park ranger hat, which uh, I will be wearing immediately. And uh, it doesn't really go with my leather armor, but it's uh, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. I don't mind the park ranger hat. It's pretty cool. Uh, right, okay. Let's uh, be on our way now then to where... Oh, I see red. I see red somewhere. What have we got? Oh, it's just a gecko. No need to be too concerned. Uh, I'm just going to go over to my hunting rifle. See if I can hit him from here. Oh, that was way off. Oh, uh, le live and let live on this occasion. That's what I say. You're too far away anyway. Right, off we pop. You'll be picking up a few banana yuckers. They're quite useful. Especially on hardcore mode. If you have to keep on top of your thirst and your hunger. Now, uh, this is the first body of water that we've come across thus far. And it's completely rad free. Completely rad free. So you can... Uh, you can get your thirst down pretty much anywhere that there's water in this DLC. So uh, it's not going to be hard at all to keep on top of our stats uh, for being on hardcore. Not here anyway. And here we are at the Eastern Virgin. There is... Uh, before we go in, there is one thing I'm looking out for. Now, there is traps in the water as well. There is these bear traps. We've got light steps, so we're quite all right. We don't need to worry about um, about setting them off. But uh, I will take two XP. Every little helps. I don't think uh, Follows Chalk can set them off either. He can, however, set off certain other traps. So we've got to bear that in mind uh, before we uh, we move on. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere on the left here, I think it's the left, is a very important location that I want to visit. Um, you'd be able to tell by the handprints on the rock. Uh, hopefully I haven't gone too far. Activate these air traps along the way. Oh. Don't worry about the red on the compass. Um, that's uh, somewhere where you won't be bothered at all. Um, they won't be able to see or reach you and, and vice versa. Is it down here? Ah, here we are. Yeah, we've got all these uh, glowing handprints on here. Now, follows chalk. I really don't want you to die, buddy. So can you wait here for just a bit, okay? Because there are traps in this cave that he will set off. And, uh, like I said earlier, I really don't want him to die. This is, uh, the first, uh, of m six locations that I need to visit. Uh, that I want to cover while we're here in Zion. Uh, so let's disarm the tripwire. So I'm going to be really, really heavily trapped up this place. And we'll see why momentarily. Right. Disarm all these uh, these shockers. I'll take all the XP I, I can get. I know we're uh, we're nearly capped at this point, and we don't really need to worry about our level too much. But um, I won't say no to uh, to XP. Right. Another really good item, um, first aid item that is literally everywhere in this DLC. Cave fungus. Let's take a look at that. Cave fungus is amazing. Because uh, not only does it get your food down, it gets your radiation down, minus 10. And uh, it's, a, it's a healing item at the same time as well. So I'm going to be picking up plenty of cave fungus. That's going to be really useful. Oh, my, this is our first uh, frag mine. Be mindful of them. This is why I didn't want to take Follow's Chalk with me. Not only is it taboo for... Uh, his people, well, his people believe that it's taboo to enter into these caves. Hence why they're marked with green handprints on the outside. It's marked as like a sort of no entry. So not only for that reason, but I don't want him to go setting off all these mines that I uh, don't spot. Because uh, he, he is very, very killable. Very, very killable. And I don't want uh, to jumpstart straight to 
the uh, bad ending if he dies. So uh, we're going to try our best to keep uh, Follows Chalk alive. Right, more traps. Some more trip wires here. Like you say, luckily I've got light step, so we don't have to worry too much. But whoever, whoever was previously the occupant of this cave, is very resourceful. Very, very resourceful. We can tell by the amount of traps that are, are laid out. And also, uh, there's a corpse here with another recharger pistol. Nice. And a jury rig shotgun. Of course, uh, not like back in the Fallout 3 days, if you disarmed a rigged weapon, you would actually get that weapon. Um, not in New Vegas, though. I think it just gives you some of the ammo for, for that weapon. Right, let me repair these uh, recharger pistols really quick. Let's mash them together, because uh, I got one of them off um, one of the caravan guards, I think. Which was nice. Right, I think we've got enough uh, cave fungus for the time being. I don't want to weigh myself down uh, too early. Because uh, carry weight is always an issue for me. Does it even weigh, in fact? Let me double check. Cave fungus. It do. I've already built up 21. Uh, I've already built up 21 in, in carry weight just on cave fungus. Right, Which is uh, the way I want to go. Because we've got a fork in the road here. I believe this way, because this way was more heavily trapped. So it would make sense if that was the actual way. This might actually, in fact, be a dead end, now that I think about it. Oh, we've got another trip wire here. There go. Okay, and that's the exit. So that's another way out. So we'll go over the other way. Because uh, I don't want to miss... Uh, I don't want to miss what's in here, basically. This is one of six cave locations that I want to visit. Ah, there we are. There's the main uh, main area of this place. That must. This way must be another exit, I'd imagine. Or just a uh, little, uh, little section of the cave with mushrooms glowing. Little glowy mushrooms. Right, here we are. Here's the main base of operation. Good thing I've got light step as well. Because I've not really been paying attention, and I could have walked over a couple of mines on the, on the way here. So it's a good thing we picked up uh, light step. A little frag mine hidden by a teddy bear there. I can say, whoever lived here was very, very resourceful. Very, very resourceful. We've got some uh, workbenches, reloading benches, etc. I'm going to take a few bits. I don't know if um, we're going to come across much in the me ways of uh, making uh, weapon repair kits. But I'll, I'll take the bits uh, all the same. Lots of uh, drained energy uh, ammo here. And uh, I'll take these uh, scrap electronics and this wonder glue. Thank you very much. Okay, lots of uh, food and things here as well. Some workbenches. Whoever uh, used to uh, live here, or call this their home, was very resourceful indeed. Very, very resourceful indeed. More uh, rig shotguns. Disarm them for the XP and the, uh, and the ammo, of course. Bitter drink. I'll take that. Jalapeno pepper. We're picking up a lot of purified water as well already. Now then, this compliance regulator. That's very, very good. I want that. Um, I want that right away. Yes, please. Now, uh, if um, you recall, um, the um, sonic wave emitter we used to have, uh, it's, in, it's still in um, Old World Blues at the moment. I left it there when uh, we completed uh, that DLC. Um, that had uh, critical strike effects like paralysis, explos uh, explosions, etc. Uh, this uh, doesn't do uh, much in the ways of damage. Um, it's got a DPS of 34 and damage of 7. But on a critical strike, it does cause paralysis, which is really, really extremely good. Really, really extremely good. 
And uh, if I remember to, I will uh, use that as much as I possibly can. Right, this is... Uh, yeah, I think we've checked everywhere here. Um, what? Are, oh, there's a duffel bag. This is what we want. We want to find six of these. These survival caches. It gives you an in-game achievement for doing so. So, uh, I'm already nearly at weight capacity. Unbelievable. Ooh, flame fuel. That'll, um... That'll be good for, uh... Flare gun. Old cowboy hat. It must have known. It must have known. I got an old cowboy hat. I'll, tell, I'll take that to mash mine uh, together with it. Me as well. It's not hugely important, but, you know, now I've got a full condition uh, old cowboy hat, so why not? More workbenches, of course, as well. That's uh, empty, unfortunately. Any more uh, bits and bobs over here? No, okay. What we're going to do now, then, is we're going to take a look at this uh, terminal entry. Zion National Park Network. And there's two entries. One from year 2077 and the other from 2078. So let's read these. October 28th. Five days on foot. Still can't sleep. Outside, it's like nothing happened. Sky looks wrong. That's all. Hike back to overturned uh, National Guard truck near uh, Tor Torqueville. After blisters heal, maybe. Looks like the USGS team was researching something here in a in cave. Cleared out when bombs fell. Left equipment behind. Probably thought they had families to run back to. October 29th. Char must have said this out loud a thousand times walking here. Maybe writing it will feel more like you heard. You were right. I was north of Spanish Fork. Took the 77 along Bravo Bay to steer clear of town. Would have been home in an hour. Engine died. Truck just stopped. So did a Chrys Chrysler in the other lane. Uh, knew right away. First nuke hit, SLC inside a minute. I was looking south, lucky man. Flash behind me, so bright, world looked on fire. Old couple from the Chrysler started screaming, they can't see. Didn't watch you die, Char. Saved my eyes. Counted 12 more flashes, next 7 minutes. Ground shook each time, 18 seconds later. When nothing hit for half hour, took a look. Globe of fire where you and Alex died. Didn't kid myself. Didn't know what to do. Grab my pack and rifle. Saw to the old couple, sat them up against the car, let them hold and comfort each other. Told them I was going to get help, everything would be okay. One bullet through both heads, instant. Five day hike back to Zion. You told me, stop running off to the wild. Man belongs with his family. You were right, you were right, you were right, you were right. Wasn't there to hold you and my boy. Died without me, never touch you or him again. Should shoot myself, what I deserve. Can't. Maybe soon. October 31st. Black rain falling outside. Geiger jumping. Should let it kill me, but bottling water from back of cave all the same. November 2nd. Sounds dead outside, but can't look. Geiger goes lethal 15 feet from the cave mouth. Do the math. Radiation goes down before the water runs out, or I never leave this cave. So that's uh, an account... Um, from someone who lived um, in the area outside of Zion, maybe near Salt Lake City or something. Uh, I don't know. I'm not good with uh, American geography. But it was the year 2077, which, um, if you're um, familiar with the Fallout series, that's the year that the bombs actually fall on October 28th. He was out in the wilds doing his bits and pieces. Um, like he says there, he's, sounds like he's um, trying to talk to uh, a, a wife or... Uh, partner uh, that he didn't get to say goodbye to um, he was out doing his business in the wilds when the bombs actually dropped but he survived and uh, it uh, doesn't seem as though um, his family did uh, by the sounds of things from his terminal entry these um, these notes here are the best witness accounts that we've got pro maybe even in all of fallout of uh, the bombs actually falling uh, a detailed account anyway of course we do see um, we do see a little intro in Fallout 4 uh, because our protagonist in Fallout 4 there's theories out there which I won't go into but generally speaking 
um, they are pre-war and you do witness a bomb drop um, but there's nowhere near as detailed an account of what happens as these terminal entries here it's really really interesting really really interesting stuff anyway uh, a year on he writes more happy f uh, January 1st happy new year two months in cave still lethal outside don't get it in army they said two to four weeks cleared fallout Less than a month's water left, been mopping condensation off cave walls, wringing shirt into bottles, trading calories for H2O, food stocks holding, thanks USGS. Uh, uh, for there was even a chance I'd see the two of you again, I'd run outside. January 10th. Sounded like windstorm out there for two days, radiation down 500. What happened? January 15th. Took a peek. Snow. It glows green. January 28th. Radiation low enough that I could risk short exposure outside. More important, cave stream now drinkable if I use rad drugs. January the 30th. There is nothing alive out there. And uh, that's where uh, these terminal entries end. So they're the first terminal entries of the uh, survivalist. And this is... I want to try and get all of them if I can. You get an in-game achievement if you find six of his stashes. Uh, where was it? It was this duffel bag over by his bed. So uh, I want to try and get all of them if I can help it. And I also want to try and uh, recount this guy's story in full as well. That would be nice. So that's one thing uh, I would uh, I would definitely like to do. Um, this is the way I came in. I want to leave the way I came in, of course, because I left uh, Follows Chalk outside. It's not that way. So uh, let's get out of this cave real quick. So he um, was uh, more than likely uh, the guy who set all these traps in here. The really resourceful guy he made this his home because uh, the bombs fell. And it was way too radioactive and way too dangerous outside. So he uh, survived as best he could in, uh, in these caves. Hello, follows Chalk. Right. Uh, you can come with me now, buddy. Follow me. Right, right. and off we go then to our uh, actual destination. How are my stats looking? Just out of curiosity. Oh, perfect. Everything on zero. Fantastic. That's how, uh, that's how we like it. Okay, let's go and see. Uh, let's go and see this uh, Joshua Graham fellow then. <laughs> Lore is important, Ching. Lore is important. You're very correct there, my friend. Uh, yeah, lore is very important. Lore can uh, get you even more immersed and engrossed in. Uh, a world such as the world of Fallout um, and fortunately as well uh, in a game like Fallout the lore is very rich and very detailed and um, it's nice it's nice it's also not forced down your throat you know it's there for you to discover if you want to look um, it's which also gives you another reason uh, to explore and another reward for exploring as well which is um, one of the reasons why I really like these games uh, law is very important. I do. Uh, I do agree with you. Um, right, we've got an intelligence check here. Uh, am I looking for Joshua? Yes, I am. Can you tell me where he is? You know our tongue. Smart, our slander. Joshua in high place of cave. You show respect, Utman. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect. He show you thunder and fire. Duly noted. I'll make sure to be on my best behavior then. You wise for Alright, let's go and see uh, the man himself. Um, he will be up here. Hello! We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have 
expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting, but I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group, but you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Uh, a mention there of another courier. Now, um, Honest Hearts is um, it's not as connected to um, to the other DLCs as uh, the others are. With um, the connections between Christine and Elijah, Ulysses, and the underlying themes of the characters do connect the other uh, DLCs quite nicely. Um, there's not much, m not much that connects uh, them with this one though. This one's this one's kind of more uh, standalone, if you will. But there was one uh, mention of another courier there, uh, which is obviously Ulysses, as we know now. We've done um, the DLC out of order slightly. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in, by the way. It all still kind of makes sense. I'm going to touch more, a little bit more on Ulysses um, later on. But um, this was the second DLC to come out for this game. So uh, we've done it out of order slightly, but it still kind of makes sense the way that we've done it and the order that we've done it in. But um, that's uh, one of the very few mentions of Ulysses in this, uh, in this DLC when he mentioned the other courier there. And uh, Ulysses has a little bit more of a connection to this uh, DLC in a small way, which uh, I'll mention, uh, I'll mention uh, shortly. Um, let's see. Uh, how would you know so much about what happened to me? The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. I came here with the Happy Trails Caravan Company to make contact with the new Canaanites. Happy Trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed. Its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the new Canaanites. Almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other new Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now. Not with everything that's going on. Uh, there we um, this comes up over and over and over um, but as we know the Legion um, they spread from the east or is it the west can't remember but where they came come from they come across the country and what they're um, what they tend to do is they promise uh, in they promise tribes and um, other uh, various factions that they come in contact with they promise them integration into the Legion uh, basically, they get an ultimatum. This uh, fight for us, um, prove your worth, join us, and then if they don't join, they basically get the uh, ultimatum of, of joining or being destroyed. And what happens then is that's how the Legion has grown into such a force. Is it's been eaten, if you will, um, other um, tribes and other factions, um, and integrating them into its army. Uh, as it sweeps across uh, all of America. And um, we uh, know, because we found a recording in, uh, in Lonesome Road, that this is what happened to, um, to Ulysses' tribe, uh, the Twisted Hairs. He was given the ultimatum of joining or dying, and uh, for better or worse, um, Ulysses actually joined the Legion. Um, he became a Fumantari as well, and went undercover as uh, a courier. But we know from a recording that we found of Ulysses that he was actually the one who did um, did pretty much what um, uh, Volpez did to the Twisted Hairs. He was the one who approached them with the uh, ultimatum of um, joining or dying. And um, he, uh, he trained them as well. And the White Legs are, are actually the uh, tribe in which we're going to be dealing with uh, a lot in this uh, DLC. So it was Ulysses himself who trained the White Legs. And uh, if you remember, we found that recording where they revered uh, Ulysses so much uh, that is to try and honor him and to try and uh, impress him, 
they imitated him by twisting his hair, twisting their hair, the same as uh, Ulysses. It had the opposite effect, though. It just reminded him of that day that Volpez and Colta actually approached the twisted hairs, and uh, he realized that Volpez wasn't approaching them as equals, and it was actually um, join or die. And it, it actually really, really pissed him off. It did the opposite to what the White Legs were uh, trying to achieve uh, by impressing him. Uh, I'm not going to leave without offering uh, to help. What can I do? You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord. But it's good to have friends. Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses or sorrows look for them. Many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. Fair enough. I can go and see. I can uh, go inside. So I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Follows Chalk can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. Excellent. Okay. Is that gonna? End? That's not gonna take me over a level, unfortunately. Not quite enough uh, XP to do so. Right, I will be taking all of that. Thank you very much. Hello, Follows Chalk. Anything in here? Workbench crate. Ooh. Some uh, drained uh, drained stuff there. Now, um, I believe... Ooh, there's more more loot over here. It's just Oh, this is actually stealing, though. I don't want to steal from Joshua Graham. We don't want to piss off Joshua Graham. Uh... He's not willing to give up his duct tape either. Um, who knows why? What about over here? Yeah, this is all stealing as well. Never mind. Okay. Now he, hopefully, if I talk to him again. Welcome back. Uh, what did you say about a courier? Who are you expecting? Ooh, we can bring up another courier. I did not know this. Hold on. Uh, let's uh, let's talk to him about that. Let's see what he says. Caesar would never admit this openly. But he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. But maybe this one survived. Now, he is referring to Ulysses there. Because we've done things out of order slightly. Um, we know uh, ultimately what happened with Ulysses. Um, me and him made friends. We, uh, we put our differences aside. And now um, he sits. Um, he sits outside of Lonesome Road, uh, keeping guard. But uh, at this point of the game, um, because this was the second DLC to have been uh, released for the game, I don't think it, you're not supposed to really know all that much about Ulysses. But there's confirmation there that he um, he did uh, infiltrate um, or go undercover as uh, a, a courier, and he was an agent of uh, the Legion as well. Uh, we can actually tell Joshua Graham at this point as well that we've met Caesar. Uh, I've met Caesar, you know. What do you think he would say if I told him you were here? I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No. He lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. So if you, um, if Caesar is very much alive in your game, you can actually bring that up with Joshua Graham. But Joshua Graham, uh, what he says there is a good way of containing uh, this DLC away from the uh, the main game. You can't just stroll up to Caesar in his camp after speaking with Joshua Graham and go, oh, by the way, I just saw Joshua Graham uh, over in Zion because, and it, the game gives you an explanation as to why. Because uh, uh, obviously, Caesar would have to kill you <laughs> for bringing that up, and uh, it would put you both in a very awkward situation indeed. So it's a nice way of containing uh, this DLC away from uh, uh, the main game. Uh, nice guns. <laughs> in the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White legs are known for them being submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork and have been using them for years. 
Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs, and even the sorrows have their Yao Wai gauntlets. This type of 45 automatic pistol was designed by one of my tribe almost 400 years ago. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. Uh, Kaching, damn, you're pretty knowledgeable about all that stuff. Um, honestly, um, this well, this game, this game, when did this game come out? 2000 and. 10 2010 I played it an awful lot over the years and also um, I'm kind of paraphrasing and like kind of regurgitating a lot of information I picked up off other um, Fallout enthusiasts as well um, if one one Fallout uh, youtuber I can recommend in particular is a is a British guy as well and he um, he I don't think anyone apart from the people who made the game know this game as well as this guy his name is um well his channel name is many a true nerd and he um he's done quite a few crazy things in fallout games he sets himself ridiculous challenges he beat all of fallout new vegas dlcs included um without healing uh without healing at all as no healing items um, no rest, no nothing like that. He didn't put it on hardcore, obviously, because I think that would be impossible. But um, he also he also went to the extreme of like banning buff out because buff out um, increases your endurance, which will give you a temporary boost in HP as well, in max HP. And he goes through the entire game not healing once. Any damage that he takes, he notes it down because the game does give you free heals on. Uh, I think you get minor regeneration as well, just normally. So he notes it down, and he keeps record of all of the hits that he's taken, and he beats the entire game on one health bar. Um, and then he goes and does the same thing again for Fallout 3, and he's done it for Fallout 4 now as well. The guy is an absolute legend. So, um, yeah, I'm just um, just reiterating a lot of stuff that I've heard over the years, and uh, like a lot, of, uh, some of it is experience from playing the game as well. I have played this game an awful lot over the years. It's um, it's a very good game. It's a very very good game. Uh, one of uh, one of my favorites, I think. If I were to pick a favorite between New Vegas three and uh, four, though, I don't think I could give you an answer. They're all great in their own specific ways. Um, some ways uh, they're better than the others, uh, but some ways you know others might be better than the others if that makes any sort of sense whatsoever uh, they're all great all of them i cannot recommend these games enough uh fantastic uh uh couple of games there now um do you run no let's say uh do you have anything to trade that's what i want i want you to operate as a shop we do though the white legs destroyed new canaan they didn't destroy all of our supply caches all forms of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars, even Legion coin. Excellent. Take a look. Okay, what have we got to uh, to sell to you then, uh, buddy? Oh, buddy old pal. I don't think I've got any... Uh, I think I got rid of most of my uh, NCR and... Um, if not all of my uh, NCR and, and Legion coin. But uh, I do want to trade a few weapons. Now, we don't need the three, 357 anymore. Um, that was just basically uh, for uh, for tradition more than anything. Um, a ten millimeter is going to be better in every way if I can repair it up. Uh, I want I want an actual gun off you though. I want one of these forty five pistols. It's really expensive. It's really really expensive. Uh, before I buy that, hold off, because I might be able to get one for free in just a second. A pretty good condition one as well. But I do want to end up with a 9mm, so even though it's the better gun out of the two submachine guns, I want the ammo for uh, a pistol. Uh, so I'm going to sell the 10mm as well. Um, I tell you what, rather than, rather than stealing one of these... I will buy one off you, because um, I've just cleared you out of money immediately right this has got a really obscure ab ammo type um, brush guns you don't really see very often so I'm gonna sell that we don't really want that I don't really want the grenade launcher either just because of the weight the carry weight 
That coupled with the ammo as well. The ammo is really heavy stuff. Um, I'll tell you what, we will keep hold of it. I don't need a laser rifle. I'm almost out of ammo for this hunting rifle as well, even though it has kind of served me pretty well. Uh, Riot shotgun's fantastic. I'll keep that because it is in uh, full condition as well. Give me, give me a bit of ammo as well, Joshua. I'll take uh, your plus P, whatever that means. I'm guessing plus penetration or something. Like it's got extra penetration. Um, also, I'll take the hollow point. Uh, how much of this can I buy before he runs out of uh, money that he can give to me? Ooh, these... These uh, mods are really cheap. Increases condition. And silences weapon. I will be taking both of them. Hell yeah. What condition is the gun that I bought off of uh, Joshua there? It's not in bad condition. I can get that up to full as well. Just with a little bit of uh, shenanigans in just a second. Do I have anything else to sell to you, my good man? No, I think we're good. You don't have any aid, do you? Not that I need any, really. Okay, we've cleared him out. I'm going to buy... How much will that cost me? Oh, that's pretty cheap. I'm going to buy all of his uh, 45 ammo as well then. There we are. That'll do uh, very nicely indeed. Fantastic. Pleasure doing business with you, Joshua. Um, right. I think uh, I think we're done talking with him. But um, I'm just going to take... Hold on. Uh, what's the button again? Before I go, uh, before I go risking what I'm about to do, let's uh, just practice over here a second. All right, okay, that's the button. I can never remember. Right, don't mind me, Joshua. I'm just going to uh, take this pistol over here and have a quick look at it. Don't mind, uh, don't mind me at all. Right, I'm hidden already because I'm behind him. Here we go. And uh, I can use that to repair the one that I just bought off him. Okay, can I get another one? Because that didn't actually make it full condition. <laughs> there we are. Again, I'm uh, just going to go and take this over here, Joshua, okay? Just to have a quick look. I don't know what happened to the other one. And... There we go, that's more or less full condition. And we can mod this as well, because we picked up the silencer and the HD slide. There we go. And I want to hotkey that, because that is going to be one of my uh, bread and butter weapons going forward. So uh, I've got, at the moment, I've got the 45 auto pistol and um, the fire axe and my riot shotgun all hotkeyed. And we're not doing too bad for carry weight at this point either. We've got a, uh, got a bit of carry weight spare as well. Uh, do I have enough bits to make a weapon repair kit at this point? I do not. But uh, while we're here, is there a campfire where I can do some survival crafting, or at least just look at the menu for the time being? If not, there might be one outside. Hopefully, Let's go out that way. Okay. Alright, unfortunately he doesn't have a uh, campfire inside. There might be one outside, though. I just want to look at the uh, the crafting menu, if anything. What's this? Is this a... Uh... Campfire! Here we are. Gecko steaks. I'll be making some of them. Uh, this is a new thing. We can make rushing water. Uh, by combining purified water with jet, we can make uh, something called rushing water, which uh, gives you plus 50% attack speed. It does reduce your H2O still, so it does reduce thirst, and it heals you. Um, I'm going to make... I'll make five of them, so I'll use half of my purified waters. Slasher as well. I think this is something you get from uh, the Great Khans. You can teach them how to make various different drugs. Uh, Slasher gives you plus 25% damage, like Psycho do, uh, but it also gives you damage resistance as well. 
Um, I'll make... I can make four of them. Okay, we'll make four of them. That's fine. Uh, but there's one other thing that I want to look at. I think it's in this menu. I think it's in this menu. I don't know if we're going to be able to get around to making this, but it's pretty cool. Gecko-backed leather armor. Uh, if you can get hold of uh, leather armor reinforced... Oh, wait, that is the reinforced version. Wait there, we'll check out the uh, normal version, which is the gecko-backed leather armor. Uh, with leather armor, which we have, uh, tanned fire gecko hide, tanned golden gecko hide, and tanned green gecko hide. Unfortunately, I don't think fire geckos or golden geckos can spawn in Zion, so that's why I don't think we're going to be able to make it. But um, we definitely have seen green, de uh, green, gecko hide, uh, green geckos. If you can, uh, to, tan, to tan the hide, by the way, um, you just need some uh, hide, obviously, and some turpentine as well. But you can make, uh, you can make a unique leather armor here. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. There's a uh, metal armor version as well and the reinforced versions. But um, I will try. I will try. The reason why I don't think I'm going to be able to, though, is I don't think all of those geckos that you need, I don't think uh, you can find... Uh, all of those types in Zion. I think some of them actually reside in the in the base game, but uh, we will uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled all the same. See if we can't uh, see if we can't make that. Now then, uh, how are my stats right now? <laughs> okay, all zero. Um, sus that's very suspect actually. That's very suspect. Why are all my stats zero? Uh, I guess I've been keeping on top of things without even realizing it. Uh, this is all stealing, unfortunately. Right, how are we looking for time, guys? Ooh, okay, break time. Huh? What are you talking about, Follows Chalk? I'm going to actually, have, before I go on break, I'm going to actually have a little conversation with him. See if he's ready to give me uh, any quests. Um, tell me any, a little about this area, any interesting wildlife. Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. <coughs> Pardon me. Of them up on the Salmon, station. what's up, dude? Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately, whew, my guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. Ah, there we go. That's one actually a quest. So it's a good thing we talked to uh, Follows Chalk. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. So we, we did pick up a, a quest there from Follows Chalk. How are you doing, Salmon? How's it going, buddy? I don't know if I've spoken to you since, but how was your uh, how was your Christmas and your New Year, my friend? I hope you had a really good one. Hope you had a really good one. And uh, thanks for coming along, buddy. Let's get you a shout out as well. Let's get you a shout out, my friend. Yes, oh, cooking clips. I've missed uh, salmon cooking clips. Let me just hang that back up. They're the best. Oh, great. They're done. Let me just <laughs> these puppies. Those steaks look good, dude. To be right, fair, I've been watching uh, too much ga uh, Guga Foods on YouTube. I don't know. I'm a vegetarian, but I tell you what. Every time I watch Guga make a steak, it, my mouth is just watering. And I, it makes me really want to eat meat again. It looks so good. But uh, anyway, Simon, I hope you're doing good, buddy. Uh, hey, yo, how's it going, Mecca? Sorry I haven't been around last few. Uh, been a bit of a crazy time at work. No problem, dude. There's no need to apologize. There's no need to apologize. You don't always have to be here. This goes to uh, anyone out there as well. I appreciate you when you are here. But don't worry. I know people uh, got their own things going on. And, uh, you know, and life, life and things. And, you know, when you are here, you're always welcome. Or Nonetheless, there's no need to apologize for anything like that. Uh, ka -ching. Uh, it's always nice to see when uh, SB has passion about uh, stuff, I guess. Uh, you can hear the enthusiasm when they talk about it, like yourself just now. Uh, thanks, dude. I'm glad, um, I'm glad it comes across that way, because I do really enjoy this game. I really, really do. I enjoy uh, Fallout in general. Um, I've never really played 1 and 2, though. Uh, 3 was my first entry into the series. And that's when I fell in love with the series as well. Actually, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'll tell you my first experience with Fallout 3. When I bought it on Xbox 360. I couldn't I couldn't understand the game. I it was rubbish at it. I didn't even know that you could like smash two types of uh, weapons or armor together to fix it. And I struggled through the game. And then, 
I lent it to a friend of mine, IRL. It's um, the same buddy that um, uh, I always mention when I go and hang out with uh, Physio IRL. And um, he, he really got into it. And then I was like, I saw him playing it. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to take it back now and try it again. And that's when I got into it. But at first, the first experience I had with Fallout 3 was horrendous because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a clue. Uh, Salmon. Uh, about now that my work week is over, also a bit rough, had some health problems pop up, but I'm doing better lately. I'm sorry, uh, Salmon. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're doing all right, buddy. I hope it's not too serious and uh, you're feeling well. Um, you take care, okay, friend? I hope, uh, I hope you're doing all right. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, thank you for the essay. No problem, dude. You always get a shout out around these parts. You know that. You know that. No need to thank me for that either. ka -ching. Oh, somebody. My bad. And something. All right. I understand. I understand. I'm uh, I'm a bit of a boomer brain, uh, ka -ching, So some of these uh, some of these uh, little things, they, they go over my head. But duly noted for the future. Now I know. Now I know. Uh, follow stroke, right? Maybe I can help you with your big horn calf problem, buddy. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing, try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. Duly noted, don't kill any bighorners. Okay. Um, Alright, I'll look into it. That's great. I'll help any way I can. Okay. Do you have anything else to give me? By any chance? Um, any idea where to start looking for these pre-war supplies Daniel needs? Best place to look for back when stuff is the taboo places. Sorrows and dead horses don't go in there. And even white legs don't like them much. Um, where should we start looking? Lots of back when places to choose from. But for the things we need, best to start with the really closed up places. Three I know of. A building down by the river called a fishing lodge, the old ranger station in the northwest, and the general store right by it. Closer to home might be something you can salvage from the place where the little ones fell, just west of the eastern virgin. Cool. Uh, what is, what's this place where the little ones fell? In the river, there's a twisted pile of metal and glass, all full of bones. Joshua says they were scouts, but... They looked awful small to me. Lots of that old stuff. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, electronics. Maybe you could use some of it. What he just mentioned there about scouts and um, them seeming too little to be scouts. That's actually kind of cute in a very twisted fallout way. Because in that, um, after the uh, post-apocalypse, obviously... Um, I don't think they would know what a scout is in pre-war. Um, they're actually kids. And um, he mentions that they look small for scouts because they don't know what the scouts were pre-war. They just obviously think of, you know, scout scouts in a traditional sense, which is kind of dark and twisted, but Fallout is often dark and twisted. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Let's talk about something else. Ask away. Um, do, do, do. I want to know more about you. What can I tell you? Why are you called Follows Chalk? Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Uh, what are all those tattoos? Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when the youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. Um, do, 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 do. Um, I was hoping that that might open up something else. Tell me about your tribe. We came up in the land of the dead horse. Though, why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided, we fought, we lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua, 
and his Kaisar. Wait, you mentioned Kaisar. When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Interesting. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, <laughs> the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us away from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. Oh, that's interesting. I had either forgotten about that or um, or just didn't know. Just, just straight, straight up didn't know. The first time that Joshua came here um, to the tribals, he was actually legate of Caesar's Legion. And he was going to integrate the tribes here, the, um, the Dead Horses and the Sorrows, into the Legion. But then, um, obviously, the first battle at Hoover Dam happened. He failed, and that's when he got burnt for... Uh, his uh, his crime of daring to fail uh, the the mighty Kaiser. Um, okay, okay, I'm gonna leave it there with um, follows chalk. I don't think I could press him to get um, any more information. Well, the information that I want about him that might be a bit later on. So um, let's uh, let's leave it there. Um, oh, I can. Right, go back to your people's camp, Follows Chalk, because you are too much of a liability. You're too important to this DLC, uh, and you must stay alive. So go back to your people's camp. You sure? It's easy to get lost out here without a guide. Yes, but I'd rather you, I'd rather you survive, buddy. Okay, so I'm sure. Off you pop. We'll meet up again later. Don't worry about it. Joshua won't be too happy, but all right. Cool. All right. Fantastic. Right, I'm I'm 100% taking my break now this time, okay? So um I will um I will be uh the usual time, don't worry. I won't be too long. I'll be 5 minutes but no longer than 7, okay? Um so uh bear with me everyone and I will be I'll be.